Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Um, looks like I'm live. If you're out there in um, Facebook land, you might just say hello if you can hear this um, or send a, a like or a heart or something just so I know it's working OK. I'm always a bit nervous when I'm outside in the greenhouse that it's picking up the coverage, but I think it's OK. Um, earlier on today, I posted in the group that uh, I'd asked for some ideas for lives in the winter because the garden's a little bit dormant and I was looking for some ideas and a suggestion about doing something to make the outside of the house look a bit more festive came through from Anita and I took her on. Uh, this is not normally something that I would consider myself very good at so uh, I don't think I'm very crafty although other people tell me I am but I don't think I am. So um I decided I'd give it a whirl because I had this, you can see, oops, Daisy, sorry. Um, you can see here, this planter is usually at the front of my house and it is not very exciting. Um, and that's its brother over there. There's one either side of the door usually. Um, and I've done the brother and I'm gonna start on this other one, which actually was, I thought the better of the two that has a bit, is a bit more life in it. Um, the front of my house is north face and it's, uh, where those planters are is in total shade. It never gets a bit of direct sunlight all day. So it's not really conducive to floral display. Like there are things that will grow in, in the shade, but they don't tend to be very showy. And when you're trying to do something showy in winter, you really are sort of making life hard for yourself. So uh, bearing all that in mind, I decided I put my thinking cap on and see what I could come up with and was scrolling around the internet looking for ideas. And I've hit on this. And uh, I think this is brilliant. Uh, I think uh, it's made a massive difference. So whether it'll stand the test of time now, we'll, we'll see. But uh, considering it took me zero time and zero money, uh, if I had to go and do it all again, it wouldn't exactly be the end of the world. So I'm just going to move back down towards here and oh, I have my fancy mic on and all today now, so we should be groovy. So I'll just move down here. OK, so, yeah, you can't see the full height of this planter. You can see this planter is tall and narrow. Like, really, this isn't a great shape for a planter because um, first of all, I've had to fill it halfway up with empty pots to fill it out because, I mean, I'm a busy woman. I'm not a rich woman. I can't afford to be <laughs> filling the whole thing with compost when it's only going to be used down as far as here. I'm sorry. I have a bit of a dose. I'm going to have to take a drink. Sorry, guys. <coughs> <coughs> Apologies. Okay. So, um. Yeah, a tall, narrow plant like this isn't great, but I did it on purpose because the front of my house is invisible from the road. So I tried, as you can see here, for the usual thriller, filler and spiller thing. Uh, so my uh, spiller is the ivy here and my thriller is this and this, I suppose. And then I have, so that's pansies and um, a little a little evergreen conifer. And... Um, I have a cyclamen and a little winter flower in heather. But like, it's all a bit meh, really. So I wasn't thrilled with it at the time. And I know what the problem, the main problem with this is just if you're ever planting up, this would be for winter, spring or summer. The main problem with this is a lack of symmetry, right? The pot is this tall, but look how much shorter the actual uh, tallest plant I have in it is. So really this um, thriller plant, to make this look right should be about this much taller for it to look like it belongs there. And that's actually quite difficult to get when you have a small, like it's no problem getting a taller conifer, but the taller conifer will take up the whole pot and there'll be nothing else in it. So really that's why you'd be much better off with the more evenly um, distributed pot, a more sort of evenly dimensioned pot. That So something that's basically a bit wider and a little bit shorter um, is is probably the ideal. So, oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm going to need to cough again. <coughs> so that's just, I suppose, to explain about the planter and why this hasn't worked for, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's grand, but why it, it's not amazing. And, and that's the main problem with it. The other thing that would be a problem, but luckily isn't for me, is something tall and narrow like this definitely would not suit a windy spot. It'll be over and rolling around before you know where you are. But I'm really lucky. I suppose the front of my house doesn't get any sun, but it doesn't get any wind either. The, the, the front, the house blocks all the wind. So 
um, that at least is something. So definitely I wouldn't be a fan of these other than, as I say, it's the only way for them to be visible from the road at my, in my particular case. So the first thing I wanted to do was add height, right? A lot of height to make it look right. So I came up with, I was just going around my garden <clears throat> trying to figure out what, um, what might work and what might not work. And actually, when you start looking, you're spoiled for choice. So the, um, there's loads of evergreen uh, foliage around when you start looking like there's ivy, even ivy, um, ivy's in flower at the minute, which is not the most thrilling flower. But for this kind of purpose of making a backdrop for a planter, it's fab. Um, <clears throat> there's ivy, there's all the different conifers. Like I have bits of yew that I, I was actually taking back a yew tree myself. Um, I've actually decided not to use them. I don't think the colors suit, but I'll use them for something else. Um, there's there's loads of different there's loads of different options when you start looking around. Um, so I want a color. I have a red front door. I'll post the photo of the final look in the end uh, later on. But I have a red front door, so I want to inject red into this scheme, for want of a better word. So, <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Um, so I intended to get holly for the season that's in it. But my, my dad has a holly bush. He went around to his house and there's no berries on it, I think. Uh, long story. Anyway, there's no berries on the holly bush. However, he does have cotoni aster. And anywhere I can, I don't have cotoni aster in my garden, but anywhere I can see it at the minute, it is in fabulous berry. So um, this is that. There's an orangey version as well. I've seen it around on the roadside and, you know, at people's houses, it's it's not a wild plant, you, you know. So you if you don't have it in your garden, you're going to have to ask somebody to borrow it. So Cotonia, well, borrow it, you know, they're going to have to give it to you. So Cotonia Aster is where I'm getting the red berries from. If you had holly, holly would do it. I have, I'm lucky enough, we live in a rural area. I'm lucky enough to have hawthorns. So uh, the hawthorns and berries still don't know if they're going to stay on it. But look, if I get to me over the Christmas, that would do me fine. Um, it's only a few weeks away, you know, and um, other ideas for berry plants would be the crab apple trees. And um, yeah, they'll give you all that red. If you're looking for the red Christmassy look, which I was looking to match my door anyway, that's where you'll get that out of. Some rose hips are now they go, they're tending towards the orange, some of them, but some of them are red as well. So that's another source of redness. But my top tip for redness is these so these are dogwood uh cornice um branches so the i have a cornice shrub with shrub bush i don't know what you call it um it's i suppose it's a bush um down at the back of my garden and you know you'd never plant it for just being of itself however it is the most useful plant I think I have in the garden. I use it the whole time, right? So these rods are brilliant that grow out of it because they're bendy um, and uh, they'll add the red. So they're kind of decorative. At the back of the garden, they look gorgeous. They're kind of red behind other trees. Um, during the summer, it has a very limey green, big leaf. So it provides a backdrop to loads of things down the shrubbery. So um, you'd see them on motorways and roundabouts like they you, you know like they're not that fancy but they're the handiest plant because the same poles then you can because they're bendy like a willow you can weave them into different shapes like even me who doesn't think she's very crafty like here i made it into a wreath last year you know and it goes hard then and stays in its uh position no problem so um yeah they're a very handy plant to have so that's what i did at the back of that just to kind of give it a bit of bring up the vertical straight away so i'll do the same thing here now i'm just slotting them around the very edges of my um, container <clears throat> because uh, i know i have jam-packed these planters full of um, bulbs so i like them crossing and looking a bit you know all over the shop i think that looks well so um i'll just keep going with this like this is, has to be the handiest bit of gardening that was ever done. Go out and cut them and come in and stick them in a pot. Like, I mean, I nearly feel like a fraud. However, I think the overall look is cool. They'll definitely last all winter because that's that reed is sitting there inside in the greenhouse for a year and there isn't a bother on it. Now, just a point about cutting um, shrubs and bushes at this time of year. It's not really the right time to be doing it. <clears throat> However, if you're talking about taking small amounts off, 
which I am. Like I'm talking about doing these, you know, a handful of these. There must be, you know, another, there's at least 10 or 20 times more of these left on the uh, shrub after I took what I wanted. So um, a handful of these and a few branches of very mature um, trees or shrubs will be fine. You don't want to go into a fairly new um, uh, tree or shrub and start taking anything off it at this time of year. It could damage it. The older ones will be well able for it. Like, I mean, things get bashed off them in wind and storms and stuff and they're fine. So you don't want to be doing it to damage, you know, with, with a view to damaging the um, plant that's in place already. And you also want to be thinking of wildlife, you know, like you don't want to go mad. There's there's birds and other wildlife that need these um, plants for cover and food over the winter. So I'm taking a bit. I'm not going crazy with it. And that's my reasoning for it. Um, that said, the bit I'm taking isn't going to make any difference. So <clears throat> I don't feel one bit bad about it. So it's grand for me out here uh, in, I suppose, rural Ireland. I can find this stuff easily enough. So uh, I was thinking about other people and what you can do. So definitely other people's gardens. If you uh, have friends or family who have mature gardens, they'll have them. Like there's laurel, there's ivy, there's even lilandi hedges. Um, like they'd, they'd be fine because if you didn't have ivy here, which I have to make my spiller element, lilandi dangling down over the bottom of it, it'd be great. And this um, cotoneaster is the horizontalist version. It's the one that's ground cover or is grown over walls on purpose um, and when you tip it up sure it turns into a fan so it's like really going to fill it out sorry now I'm going to have to go around the front to see what I'm doing and that guy goes on the left so this I'm trying to make sure that there's sort of a bit of symmetry in it all yeah let's go this one so I'm just wedging it in against the back sorry I'll go back the other way that's that and then here's my hawthorn. So I'm right against the edge because I'm I'm worried about my the bulbs that I planted getting totally squished. That's that. And like already, that's nearly it. I'm done now. I get a few rose hips. So I've been trimming them with my secateurs. Mind your hands. I should probably be wearing gloves. I say it every week. I still don't have the gloves on, but you know, I even bought new gloves this week. <laughs> Excuse me again. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll just get another few if I can get the rich red because I'm trying to match in with my own front door. I doubt the rose hips will last, but you know, it's worth a shot. They just bring they bring a bit of redness down near the bottom here, which I think kind of finishes it off. And like later on, you know, I put lights and Christmas decorations and stuff on it later on, but it's a bit that's a bit early for me to be at that crack yet. Um, <clears throat> so then, so that's more or less it. I see you saw how easy that was. So that's what I mean. I nearly feel like a. a a bit of a fraud showing you, but I mean, it, I think it really makes a difference. Um, the other thing that makes a difference is picking out the colours of your foliage, right? So the, the uh, wall that's behind this is a fairly, fairly pale beige. And I have a red front door, as I said. So I was trying to pick stuff that will tie in with that. So these are kind of mid, mid green, I'd call it. I'm kind of going for a red and a mid green scheme here. Um, the other options you can go for are something where you'd be going for more of a yellowy, a yellowy kind of a colour scheme. You can do loads around that with Choicea, uh, Lelandi, as I was mentioning earlier on. Some of the laurels, depending on which laurel, like, you know, that spotty laurel, I can't think of the name of it. Um, yeah, like those, those kind of ones are all that yellowy colour. So depending on what colour wall you have behind you, it's something you could be thinking of. Um, then to go, so this is mid, this is kind of yellowy green. And then the other kind of uh, color scheme you could look at is a kind of a bluey gray green. So um, some of the spruces and junipers are that color. And the um, Lebanese cedar is that color. Um, 
you, uh, eucalyptus. I view eucalyptus to be fabulous. You could stick in a few branches of eucalyptus and it'll do with no harm at all. Actually, that'll enjoy being cut back a bit. And if you went down that greeny gray, um, kind of bluey gray kind of color scheme, I was thinking pampas grasses would look fab in with that. Now they wouldn't, I, I, I'm tempted because I'm kind of put too much of everything into everything. So I was tempted to stick them in here, but I don't think um, they'd really do it any favors. But I've loads of those pampas grasses and they would definitely survive um, over the Christmas, over the whole winter. So this, I just think lifts this up, gives it the bit of height it was missing and we'll keep it going until the bulbs that are in it um, come up. And I just see, I made a few notes just to make sure I was talking, that I mentioned everything else. <clears throat> oh yeah, another one, if you're going on the yellowy greeny one, another one that's out at the minute that is, is one of my favorites, but I don't have one big enough to go robbing branches off, is Mahonia. So Mahonia is a prickly brush, kind of like an overgrown holly leaf, for want of a better word, with lovely yellowy flowers this time of year, like a really lovely and bright. So if you were looking for a yellowy kind of scheme, definitely look for Mahonia. And have I said everything else? Um, Viburnum, depending, right? If you have a look at your Viburnums at the minute, they're probably starting to come into flower. If you had one that had flowered, don't don't cut your viburnum branches before the flowers come out because you won't get flower and the flower is lovely and it actually smells lovely as well so have a look around and see what you have but i think there's actually there could be mileage in this <laughs> so um if you do do it will you plant me or uh, post me a few photos don't plant me photos and um, mary i see one would never think of putting cushions into the arrangement oh thanks mary yeah i think it came out lovely as well fingers crossed as i say look it mightn't last I, it, you'd be in trouble i'd say in the windy spots of because i don't think they'd stand up to too much um too much hardship however you can you know like it's no big deal to replace it do you know like i'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to start crying if anything happens to a few of me dogwood branches do you know or stick them back in you know so it's not the end of the world so um yeah that's my brainwave for today and thank you very much to anita who gave me the uh challenge that made me do something that's not my usual thing i'm going to pop them out the front of the house and i'll take a photo and post it and not go in and post the letters to santi with the kids so i hope you all have a lovely sunday afternoon it's lovely here now at the minute so hope you're all having a lovely weekend and take care thanks for joining me bye